you know, I think they it moves some guys around a little bit, and so they're getting a little bit better use out of their personnel. And, and they're also a little bit more aggressive than they were than what we saw last year. And so um, they're able to do some th more things within their scheme. And, um, so it's going to be a tough challenge for us. In your Coach, opinion, what, does, uh, what makes Khalil Tate so special? Oh, geez. You know, I, I'm just watching some crossover games. I mean, this is a really, really dynamic athlete. I mean, I don't know, you just you give him a little crease and he's gone. You know, very, very fast, elusive, throws the ball a lot better than a lot of guys do with that, with that type of skill set. And so he's just a you know, really dangerous player. Coach, sorry if you already answered this, but just how do you think Arizona was able to kind of turn it around so quickly just in terms of these last year, towards the end, of the year, they were kind of reeling a little bit offensively and defensively. How did they kind of flip that switch? Yeah. I, On defense specifically. Um, you know, like I say, I don't, I, you know, I think sometimes that can just come with wins and losses. I think it can, it can come from, I think they've been feeding off the momentum a little bit from the other side of the ball. You know, right. that was a, you know, that's a big difference in, in just in their offense from what one player did. Right. And, to me, when when that happens, the defense starts feeding off that momentum a little bit, and they start gaining confidence, and they you know they start making doing, making some good things happen on their side of the ball, creating turnovers, and and there's a belief created there, and then, you know, that you know, those things just kind of feed off each other. You get some momentum going, and, and some good things start to happen. I think that's what, what's happened for that program because I, I I know all along they've been a really really well coached program. Right. Right? You never um, ever second guess that with that with that staff and time and energy and what they have those kids doing schematically are all very, very good things. You know? And so. kind of for, for you guys, what did you kind of seen that USC was able to do successfully? Obviously, it was kind of a shootout, but what did they do well on offense that you guys maybe hope to emulate a little bit? Uh, you know, I, I think they were very, very balanced. Um, you know, I can't remember exactly what the numbers were, but, you know, I, I think it was pretty close rushing and passing. Right. And so, um, you know, Sam Darnold made some really, really special plays in that game. In the throw game, it wasn't like it was just clean. Everything was wide open. He had some good players making making some good plays, but they were they were able to get after it um, in the run game as well, and they stayed pretty patient with that. And, and so there there was balance there. It might have been about 300 both uh, rushing and passing. And, you know, but USC is a talented team also. The play calling the last week has been the last couple of weeks have been pretty creative. Have those been there, or are you just getting more creative? <laughs> I'd like to think I'm getting more creative. You know, um, some of it's been there, but it's just just trying to create different looks within the schemes that we're already already running, and you know, different ways to use personnel. And so, um, you know, been shifting and motioning and kind of moving guys around and, and doing some of those things. And our, our kids have been buying into it. It's, it's you know, you start to uh, establish some tendencies with what you're doing, and, and some of it you can kind of guard against those tendencies by by creating a little bit different presentation for the defense, so a lot of it kind of geared around that as well. When you guys are calling those trick plays, are you on the sidelines 100% confident that they're going to work, or sometimes <laughs> are you just looking out there like, we'll see how yeah, this goes? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you're ever 100% confident in those, um, you know, but there were a couple of days in practice where I had to watch Thule warm up a little bit to make sure <laughs> no. he might have the right trajectory to get that ball there, and, you know, that ball didn't look like some of the days in practice, but he got it there, so that's what counts. But. No, I think our guys have fun with those. Like I said, trick plays. I don't know if you ever have full confidence in them. And, you know, part of it is, you know, some of those tricks may only work against one specific defensive look, and you know, so you're you're kind of praying for the right look on that. And, you know, when we when we saw that they were in man coverage in that situation, now I'm looking at the backside linebacker to see if he loses track of Ryan, and then. And then I'm seeing a ball float through the air that I'm hoping gets there. So, but is, it's been kind of fun. Does it kind of take the pressure off of the offense a little bit to be able to have plays like that that you know are just a little interesting? You know, the Fred Lowina throwback, then this throwback this week. Does it kind of take a little pressure off the offense? You can use something like that. Um, you know, I, I I don't know if it takes any pressure off them, but I think it just it gives them things where they have fun with it. There's some right. things to look forward to. Both both of those situations, you know, when you when you talk to those guys. You know, they're kind of anticipating it, and maybe you're motivating them to get into those situations. But you know, I told told the whole offense with um, with Fred's throwback. I was like, okay, we get down into the red zone. We're on the left hash. This is what you're, this is what's going to get called. And, and same thing in the in the unit meeting on Friday with our guys. I was like, okay, the first time we're across the 50 and you're on the left hash, this is what the call the call is going to be. And and so they kind of you know that that happens, and then they're all kind of geared for, up for it at that point. And so. That they're prepared for it and they have fun with it and, and ready to get out there next year.